Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. A month remained until her husband's birthday. Mariana understood that her mother-in-law planned to celebrate it on a grand scale, but she herself did not want to be particularly involved in all of it. Roberto, Mariana's husband, was the owner and manager of the local mill. In a small provincial town, this already looked like a big business. The mill was in demand among the local people. Many tried to keep livestock and poultry, which suppliers from the city would then take from them. Mariana had been living with her husband for 10 years, but in recent years, she had increasingly doubted if she had made the right choice. Once, a young girl from the village wanted to marry a city man, hoping to leave her godforsaken village. However, as the years passed, Mariana realized that family life with Roberto did not work out for her. It wasn't that they still didn't have children, but her husband was never loyal to her. Within a year, Mariana realized that her husband had someone on the side. So what? The 25-year-old girl thought at the time. He's still my husband, and he comes home to me. But years passed, and Mariana realized that her attitude towards family life was fundamentally mistaken. Maybe that's why we don't have children, Mariana sighed. If he loved and valued me, he wouldn't have other women on the side. Is this really a life? Almost every day, my husband comes home from work smelling of lipstick or women's perfume. In the last three years, Mariana has begun to think about what it would be like if she and her husband divorced. This question troubled her. Perhaps I will meet someone who will love me, she thought. What I have now can't be called a marriage. Everything in our family is flawed, from the phrase how are you, to the desire to cook dinner for my husband. Mariana closed her eyes. Fragments from her childhood flashed before her. Her father drank several shots every evening. Mariana's mother worked on a duck farm and came home exhausted. At 55, her legs began to fail. The woman saw three cows in the yard that her mother milked and poured into jars before work, which a neighbor took and sold in the city. That certainly wasn't life, the woman sighed. And why did we need so much? Why couldn't my parents abandon their duck farm and take care of livestock and poultry at home? They had hoped to retire and receive a lot of money. In reality, despite their long service, both her father and mother received the minimum pension. No matter how much Mariana ran with them to various authorities, they couldn't change anything. In the end, Giorgio, Mariana's older brother, who stayed in the village, took care of their parents. In the early years, Mariana often visited, but three years ago, she got a job, so she didn't have as much free time. I better go to work, Mariana told herself then. I'm already tired of my mother-in-law and her reproaches. Soon, she'll start counting every piece of bread I put in my mouth. Mariana glanced at the clock, but there were still 20 minutes left until the end of the break. She worked as a cashier at a utility service. The salary was small, of course, but Mariana felt independent from her husband. Her only friend was Lorenza, whom Mariana met by chance. Mariana had just arrived in the city, and she had no place to stay. She found an ad in the newspaper for a room for rent, and the owner turned out to be Lorenza, a very kind woman. She was 15 years older than Mariana, but after Mariana's marriage, the women continued to be friends. Hello, Mariana, Lorenza exclaimed joyfully. I haven't heard from you in a while. How are you doing? Hello, Lorenza, Mariana replied happily. Nothing new. I'm just getting myself ready for another ordeal. Roberto's birthday is in a month, and his mother is planning a celebration. Well, at least you'll have some fun. Mariana, you need to take things easier. Lorenza, to be honest, I'm sick of him and his mother. I don't understand why I live with him at all. He doesn't love me, and I don't love him. He has many other women on the side. I've been telling you for a long time, leave him and don't even think about it, equals Lorenza replied seriously. Guys like him never settle down. You know, I don't understand why he needs me, Mariana said with frustration. I should have filed for divorce long ago, and each of us would have been living our own lives by now. We've argued about it so many times, 
but he still says, no. And a week later, he comes home with lipstick marks on his clothes again. Is this a life? You see, men like him keep good wives around as justification to cleanse their conscience, her friend replied. Like, look, she lives with me. Everyone knows that Mariana is a good, exemplary wife, so I must be good too. So, I'm doing everything right. Do you understand? You're like a protective shield for him. A good woman can't live with a bad man. That's why he needs you. I don't know. Mariana's throat tightened. I'm so tired of all this. Why am I so weak-willed? As soon as I decide to file for divorce, something stops me. Just look at the result, Lorenza advised. What have you achieved in the past 10 years? Nothing. As the great Einstein said, if you do the same things for many years and expect a different result, you're insane. And he's right, Mariana quickly agreed. It's just some kind of madness, and I want to stop it. When Mariana started renting a room from Lorenza, she was going through a very difficult period in her life. Lorenza had recently divorced and spent several years recovering. Lorenza's first husband was vain and arrogant. For many years, he devalued his wife and made her bow before him. When Lorenza found herself in deep depression, it dawned on her who was the true reason for her unwillingness to live. Her husband had crushed her will so much that Lorenza even contemplated suicide. Only by making incredible efforts did Lorenza manage to break free from the shackles of her first husband and liberate herself from the psychological abuser in her life. Two years after Mariana got married, Lorenza met a kindred spirit. Constantino also had a complicated past, but over the years, they overcame their deepest wounds together and began to live, as they say, in perfect harmony. Lorenza could see what was happening with Mariana, but she also understood that Mariana needed to see it for herself. Lorenza, I really understand that I need to end all of this, Mariana finally said. After his birthday celebration, I'll file for divorce. I don't care if he wants it or not, but I won't cover up his dirty deeds anymore. Let everyone know what a womanizer he is. I've had enough. After the conversation with her friend, Mariana felt a strong inner impulse. She clearly saw that she needed to end her relationship with Roberto. All right, I need to plan this, Mariana thought as she returned to the cash register after lunch. For about three months, I'll try to save up some money. It should be enough for the beginning, and then whatever God has for me. The workday was going at a steady pace, with few visitors on this day, so that the cashier could be lost in her thoughts. Mariana kept seeing images of children in her mind. She heard their cheerful voices and felt warmth spreading throughout her body. If only I could hold such a bundle of joy in my arms, she thought to herself. Lord, why is everything so different for me? But a customer arrived, distracting the cashier from her thoughts. The man paid the utility bills, thanked her, and left. Finally, the workday came to an end, and it was 4.50 p.m. Mariana slowly started packing her things. She didn't have a car, and she never really wanted one. Her husband never came home so early, so Mariana always relied on public transportation. All right, I'm on a halfway point. I will be home soon, Mariana said, looking at her watch. In about 40 to 50 minutes, she boarded a crowded bus. Many were returning home after work. Mariana stared out the window as the bus navigated through potholes and bumps. The city hadn't allocated funds for road repairs for a long time, so there were no particular complaints from passengers. I have chicken breast and some vegetables at home, Mariana thought on the way. Probably, I'll fry everything together. And as a side dish, I'll boil some pasta. Maybe I'll buy something for coffee on the way, she pondered. Although, Roberto brought a box of chocolates and a cake recently. Probably from his mistress, who ran away that night. God, wasn't he ashamed to bring that home? Well, let him eat it himself, and I'll buy myself some chocolate cookies. Mariana got off one stop earlier to stop by the store. She looked with interest at what sweets she could get. Take this pastry, it's very delicious. 
It has everything, airy cream, nuts, and chocolate, the seller suggested. All right, give me half a pound. I'll try it, Mariana agreed. And can I have some coffee too? Well, I'll treat myself to a festive dinner today, Mariana rejoiced as she was walking home. It's still uncertain when Roberto will come today. After that incident with the ruined date, he was sulking all evening yesterday. Probably, another mistress dumped him. Mariana changed clothes and started preparing dinner. Despite Roberto earning decently, it couldn't be said that they lived lavishly. At least for the home, they always bought the cheapest things. Mariana felt that her husband spared no expense for his mistresses. Even judging by the candies he brought, they were not cheap, but for his wife, even simple caramel would be enough. Sometimes it reached the point of absurdity. On the weekend, Mariana asked her husband to buy some fruits. Roberto went to the market, and he was whistling all day. In the evening, he finally returned. What's this? Mariana exclaimed in shock, pulling out a bag. Roberto, they're all spoiled. But they were half price, he quickly replied. You wanted to make jelly out of them anyway. These are perfect for that. Are you out of your mind? Mariana got angry. Should I cook with rotten produce now? Roberto, don't you have money? I do, he replied shortly, but one should live wisely. If there's a chance to save money, why not? And that was not the only instance. But even back then, in Mariana's heart, the dream of getting rid of her husband forever began to grow. Over the years, Roberto only became worse. Of course, his mother, Sira Herrero, contributed to this. She was a self-willed woman who believed that everyone owed her money for raising her children. This applied not only to her own children, but also to everyone around her. Only her younger brother, Eugenio, never played by her rules. In reality, Roberto's mother deliberately hid the fact that her younger brother had helped her a lot in the past. Essentially, he bought her a house. At that time, he had nothing himself. One day, Eugenio couldn't take it anymore and spoke out against his sister. After that, they hadn't spoken for many years. Roberto's mother considered him the first enemy and constantly turned her son and daughter against him. He has no connection to our family at all, she would complain. His mother gave birth too late when my father had been gone for 20 years. Nobody knew who his father was. She disgraced our noble family with that wretch. There was just over a 10-year age difference between her and her brother. When Sarah's husband tragically died, she was 28 and left with nothing, with two children to take care of. In that year, Eugenio found work on a construction site. He had worked there for three years, and he gave almost all the money to his sister, who saved it and eventually bought herself a house. But Roberto's mother never talked about it. Once, she casually mentioned that Eugenio had a girlfriend on the construction site whom he loved. She fell from the seventh floor and died. Mariana finally prepared dinner and sat down eagerly at the table, but to her surprise, she found that she had little appetite. I spent so much time and effort on all this, and I don't feel like eating, Mariana sighed and put down her spoon. But I'll definitely have coffee, she said to herself, looking at the beautiful pastries on the plate. Mariana finished dinner and tidied up everything. She knew that her husband was unlikely to come home early. Mariana picked up the phone and called her mother. Mom, how are things there? Her daughter asked with concern. How are your legs? Is the medicine making you feel better? Well, Mariana, at times I can bear it, but sometimes I can't just move them, sighed her mother. I don't want anything anymore, neither keeping livestock nor birds. Mom, it's high time for you to give up all this, Mariana supported her. Is there not enough money for life? We don't need much with your dad, replied Rosanna Pastor. We want to help you and Giorgio in any way we can. But brother has enough livestock of his own, Mariana angrily replied. He could have opened a farm already. Mariana, but your well-being is what concerns us, her mother said through tears. We are here for the sake of you. 
and Giorgio has a family and children. What about you? Mom, please, Mariana got annoyed. If it doesn't work out, what can I do? Everything's fine with me. Roberto says he has no problems either. Mariana, maybe that's why you don't have children because he's always with mistresses. Leave him, her mother worried. He turned out to be such a scoundrel. You're right about that, Mariana replied. Mom, I want to divorce him. I'll file for divorce in a couple of months. He has an anniversary in a month, and his mother is practically preparing a citywide celebration. By the way, will you and Giorgio come? We definitely won't, and I doubt your brother will either. They have constant affairs at home. How can they abandon such a farm? Your dad and I can't handle it ourselves. Mariana, leave this city and come back home. Where will you go after the divorce? You don't have your own place, and here, you'll have a whole house. Mom, I don't want to live in the village, you know that, the daughter replied. Of course, I'll come to help you, undoubtedly, but to live there, no. At least come back for a while after the divorce until you get back on your feet, Rosanna pleaded. You're still young. Solve the issue with Roberto faster, Mariana. You'll get married again, and you'll have children. But with him, you see, it's empty. After the conversation with her mother, Mariana became even more convinced of her decision to divorce Roberto. She understood that when she first met him, she desired a comfortable life more than love. However, as she aged, her selfish desires evaporated like smoke, and Mariana clearly saw that living for the sake of a comfortable and settled life without any interest in each other was meaningless. She remembered the day she met her future husband. The girl worked in a store, and one day a handsome young man walked in. He glanced Mariana up and down, and the saleswoman blushed. Do you need something? She finally uttered. I can show you around. Unfortunately, what I need is not sold here, the man sighed theatrically. And what is it? Mariana asked in bewilderment, looking around at the goods in the store. Love, the stranger romantically pronounced. It's something you can't buy. You can, of course, find a girl who possesses such a gift, but where will you find her? He looked directly into Mariana's eyes, turned around, and left. What did he want? Mariana wondered. What was he after? People like him enjoy messing with others. The saleswoman quickly forgot about the strange customer, but to her surprise, he appeared in their store again a few days later. Unfortunately, while you were away, love still wasn't delivered, she said with a serious expression. The man burst into loud laughter. With joyful eyes, he looked at Mariana, who became embarrassed and blushed. I like you, the young man said. I'm Roberto. He extended his hand to the girl. Mariana, she shyly shook his hand. Do you need something different today? Yes, he replied through laughter. I need a beautiful vase for my mom. Could you pick something for me? She broke hers recently, and now she's suffering. My mom loves flowers, especially when they are in large vases. Well, then take this one, Mariana suggested, pointing to a large vase on the floor. It's not only beautiful, but also very capacious. You're right. I'll take it, the man rejoiced. I'll help you pack it. Mariana never knew why Roberto chose her. He was an eligible bachelor who could have chosen a more suitable match. Yet, at that time, the girl genuinely believed that he was in love with her. Two months later, Roberto introduced Mariana to his mother. The latter looked at the girl with undisguised disdain. So, your parents raised pigs? Sarah, Roberto's mother, looked at Mariana accusingly. Well, that tells a lot. No, the girl corrected her. We only have cows and chickens. We don't deal with pigs. Ah, it makes no difference to me, Sarah replied, dissatisfied. But why? Mariana couldn't understand Roberto's mother's behavior. They are completely different animals, she smiled. The woman looked at her with contempt. She wanted to say something, but her son intervened in the conversation. 
Mom, Mariana, and I want to get married next summer, he said. We can arrange the wedding in a cafe. Isn't it too early for you to be thinking about marriage? His mother dryly replied. You don't even know her. And judging by the fact that Mariana has no education, it's hard to say what will become of her in the future. Does Roberto have an education? Mariana asked in surprise. As far as I know, he dropped out of college and didn't finish it. But he at least spent three years there, Sarah looked at her disapprovingly. That was enough for him to manage his mill, while your high school diploma will only be enough for housekeeping. After the first meeting with Roberto's mother, Mariana felt belittled. At first, she wanted to prove that she was capable of something in life, but in a couple of months, rumors reached her, and she found out how Roberto acquired the mill. Whether it was true or not, Mariana was told that Sira was once the mistress of the city administrator. For many years, he, so to speak, paid her for her services. From this connection, Roberto's mother received a very good income. First, she arranged for her son to go to university, then her daughter finished college and got married. Sira gave her daughter an apartment in the city for the wedding, and then, out of nowhere, Roberto got a mill. Roberto, where did you get so much money from? His acquaintances asked him. You never worked anywhere. You just sat on the neck of your mother for so many years. What do you mean, I never worked? I worked plenty. He responded. I'm not going to go around telling everyone everything. So all of this is earned through hard work and labor. Once the mill started running, despite its high demand, Roberto used it to his advantage and immediately raised the prices. Roberto, people told him, you can't do that. If there was something else in town, we would go there, but you take advantage of the fact that you're the only one of your kind and shamelessly raise prices. But the mill owner just smiled in response. He had no intention of lowering the price for his services and he paid low wages to the regular workers who dragged bags to the mill. It was around 10 o'clock when Mariana heard a click at the door. Her husband came home. He was radiating happiness, and he strongly smelled of women's perfume. Roberto, aren't you ashamed at all? His wife could not endure. Do you think I will tolerate your carousing endlessly? I'll file for divorce. Mariana, why are you upset again? Her husband protested. Don't spoil my mood. You won't leave me. We'll see about that, Mariana shouted, and she went to her room. You can start preparing the documents, she shouted from there. What a fool, replied Roberto. Do you think that after the divorce, I'll give you anything? Go to hell. I'll soon divorce you myself, just let me finish my business with Otelia. That night, Mariana slept poorly. She was constantly angry, sometimes at her husband, sometimes at herself. She realized that her patience was wearing thin, and she couldn't live like this much longer. In the morning, she woke up early, her husband was still asleep. Mariana quickly got dressed and went outside. I don't even want to talk to him anymore, she hissed. May my eyes never see him again. Mariana silently wandered through the morning streets. There was a slight fog. September was just beginning, so traces of summer still lingered. It was Friday, and for Mariana, it was the last working day. The weekend awaited her. I'll go to my parents, she told herself. I'll talk to them. Maybe they'll have ideas on what to do after the divorce. Mariana wearily sat on a bench, closed her eyes, and let her face soak in the morning sun. She started thinking about children again. They were laughing loudly and playing with a ball. They are so cute, Mariana sighed, snapping out of her thoughts. Maybe I'm haunted by the desire to have children. Mom is right, I'm already 35. Why waste time with this Roberto? Besides, there's no love between us. Mariana stood up from the bench and walked towards the bus stop. She knew she would arrive at work too early, but decided it was better than staying at home. The day passed quickly, and the tired Mariana headed home. Unexpectedly, she picked up the phone and called her husband. Roberto, I'm going home today. I'll be back on Sunday, she said dryly. 
Okay, he replied, unable to conceal his joy. Call when you're coming back. He's probably afraid I'll catch him at home with his lover, Mariana thought to herself and hung up. Roberto was overjoyed that his wife was leaving for a few days and that he would have the house to himself. His new acquaintance, Otilia, was driving him crazy. He fell in love like a boy, even though he was almost 40. All right, I'll call Otilia now so she can wait for me, he said, taking the phone and dialing her number. Hello, my love. A girl said. Well, of course, I'm waiting for you. I'll cook a romantic dinner for us. Otilia was 22, and she was determined to get a wealthy man. She came to town with a specific goal, and she was not interested in trifles. Otilia immediately set her sights on a target. There were several wealthy men in her experience, and the fact that they were married did not scare her. The main thing was to catch them in her net, and if she managed to divorce one of them and get married, well, good, if not, I'm not embarrassed to play the role of a well-off mistress. Roberto was the first to fall for Otilia. Things were going well between them, so for now, she decided to stop at him. Main thing is that he keeps giving me money, Otilia pondered as she was setting the table. Today, I'll find out about his wife. As he said, they have no children, so there won't be any problems in the case of a divorce. Finally, the doorbell rang, and the hostess opened the door. She playfully threw herself around the man's neck. Roberto, I missed you so much. The girl said through tears. You know, I probably can't live without you. I can't get through a day without you. Oh, come on, my love, Roberto kissed her. I love you very much too. Well, how are we going to live now? She innocently asked him. You are married and have a family. Well, yes, I'm married, the man replied. But, unfortunately, I don't have a family. It didn't work out with Mariana. And what are you planning to do now? The girl asked with interest. After so many years of living together, are you really going to file for divorce? That's right, Roberto embraced his new love. I don't see any obstacles to our divorce. We have no children and there's nothing to divide. Mariana will leave my house with nothing. But what if she takes you to court? Otilia pondered. She could win and take something from you. That's unlikely, her beloved reassured her. Mariana has only been working for the last three years, and before that, she lived entirely on my account. So, there's no question of dividing property. I've been supporting the family, and she spends her own money on pocket expenses. That's good, the girl sighed. I love you so much that I don't even know how I'll survive until your divorce, she cried. Otilia, everything will be fine, Roberto comforted her. You just have to wait a couple of months. Roberto and Otilia spent an unforgettable evening together. Roberto decided to stay at her place for the weekend, but on Saturday, he had to go to work. Roberto, listen, a man from the mill called on the phone. They don't want to pay for the flour. They say another mill has opened in town, and their prices are much lower. They want you to match that price. What? Roberto cursed. Who could have opened another mill there? He wondered. Okay, I'll be there soon. Roberto, annoyed, headed to the mill. Several people had gathered nearby. None of the customers wanted to pay the price he had set. What is going on here? The mill owner shouted. Either pay what I said or get out of here. I won't give you the goods. On what grounds? Replied the man with mustaches. I brought you my wheat. Do you even do any work here? You never lifted a finger. You were good for nothing. All your people work for free. If you don't want to, don't sell my flour at a fair price. Let this sin be on you, but remember, no one will come to you anymore. At the new mill, prices are almost half of yours, and the owner there is a good man. The man turned around and left. Others quarreled and left too. Roberto glared angrily at his workers. In anger, he scattered the sacks. Finally, he calmed down a bit and approached one worker. 
Where is that damn mill? He asked. Who is this idiot getting in my way? I'll show him. I don't know, shrugged the young guy. They say it's on the other side of town. Well, I'll deal with them now, the owner said, jumping into his car. I'll show them who's in charge here. It took Roberto an hour to find the new mill. He jumped out of the car and rushed through the gates. You? What are you doing here? The man asked in shock. Do you work here? Imagine that, someone replied to him. Why did you come? I don't need your orders. So, it's you who opened the new mill. Roberto shouted in anger. You're a scumbag. Why is that? The 50-year-old man replied. I don't call you a scumbag for living most of your life in a house, Bob, with my money. How dare you? The guest raised his hand. I'll strangle you right here. Well, try it. The owner of the new mill grabbed his hand so hard that the man screamed in pain. Let me go, idiot. You'll break my hand. Roberto tried to break free. I hate you. You've always been a nuisance. Why did your mom even give birth to you? It's not for you to decide who lives and who doesn't, the uncle replied. So, get out of here. I don't interfere in your affairs. You, scoundrel, are lowering my prices, the nephew fumed. If you don't calm down, you'll see what I'll do to you. I'm the owner here, so I set the price as I want, Eugenio replied. And it's not my problem that you have no conscience and you rob people. I'll get back at you, scumbag, Roberto hissed. And I'll burn your mill to the ground, you'll see, and nothing will happen to me for it. The man started his car and raced home to his mother. She was cooking in the kitchen and wasn't expecting her son. Roberto, my son, what happened? His mother asked anxiously. You look awful. Did Mariana do this to you? What does my wife have to do with this? He exclaimed angrily. It's all your brother's doing. Why hasn't he died yet? Eugenio? His mother exclaimed in surprise. How is he connected with it? What has he done to you? He opened his mill and set low prices, so no one wants to come to me now, he angrily replied. What a scoundrel, Sarah said with her hands on her hips. I'll give him a good seeing. What are you going to show him? Roberto asked, annoyed. After the administrator's death, we don't have such connections in our town anymore. Let's hire some guys to show him, the woman's eyes flashed with anger. And let them kill him, for that matter. I hate him so much. It won't work out, the son firmly told her. Suspicion will immediately fall on us, and I'm not going to prison because of that idiot. So what should we do then? Ciro worried. He's not going to close his mill now anyway. That's why we'll set a fire there, Roberto smiled. The building is old, so it can easily happen there. You want to burn his mill? The mother looked at her son in astonishment. Roberto, I won't let you do that. But I won't do anything myself, he rubbed his hands. I have someone in mind, and he'll organize everything. We need to do it carefully so no suspicion falls on us. Well, all right, the mother agreed. Just be very careful, we might end up in prison because of this idiot. He's not worth it. Roberto returned to his lover, happy. Images of the new mill blazing in flames kept flashing in his mind all the time. The man parked his car and ran into the entrance. Otelia was already waiting for him. Roberto, darling, what happened to you? She asked the man with concern. You left so suddenly that I didn't even know what to think. Yes, I had urgent business, Roberto replied, but now I'm completely free for you. He kissed the girl. What business? Otelia persisted. Is it something serious? Could you be hurt? Not anymore, he smiled. This bastard just crossed my path, so I put him in his place. Darling, were you being threatened? Otelia wanted to find out the necessary information. Were they gangsters? No, Roberto laughed. 
Just someone opened a new mill in town and set a very low price for the service, so all my clients went over to him. But now everything is fine, don't worry. This new mill will simply burn down in a few days. Have you lost all your clients? Otelia asked him irritably. What are you going to do now? Don't you have any income now? I'll solve this issue in a few days, Roberto reassured his lover. So don't worry. Otelia was not pleased with what had happened. She realized that Roberto was not as reliable a lover as she had thought. In one moment, he could lose everything. Well, I'll wait, Otelia told herself. If he doesn't fix things, I'll break up with him immediately. Why do I need him without money? I don't need such goodness. There are many like him out there. Roberto stayed with Otelia for the whole night. The man decided that when his wife called, he would then go home. So he decided to forget about all his troubles and indulge in physical pleasures with his lover. Otelia, I love you so much, he whispered to his mistress. I will divorce soon, and we will be together, I promise. The girl looked into his eyes, but in her mind, different plans were unfolding. Roberto, I got on the bus, his wife called. I'll be home in 2.5 hours. Mariana really did not want to go home. Not that she dreamed of staying in the village, but with each passing day, her aversion to her husband grew so much that she didn't even want to see him. Mariana, if it has come to disgust, it's time to quit all this, her father told her. There's no point in pushing it. You know, your mother and I argued and got angry with each other, but it was just anger. There was never hatred between us. That's true, Rosanna confirmed. Your father and I only argued and decided to divorce in words, and then, when I calmed down, I realized that I didn't want to live without him. I never needed anyone else. Yes, I understand that I trapped myself on my own, the daughter sighed. I wanted an easy life, but as it turned out, you have to pay for everything. An easy life is just an illusion. It seems that if you have a well-off husband, there will be no problems in your life. But for all these years, I've been paying for my Roberto. I endure all his mistresses and his greed, which has been particularly evident in the last few years. I've been trying not to notice the insults from his mother for so many years. And what's the point in all of this? I don't live a luxurious life at all. Essentially, I have nothing behind me. All my suffering is not worth any of this. So go ahead and file for divorce as soon as you arrive, her father concluded. You won't stay on the street, and we will help you as much as we can. Mariana was heading home, and she had a very strong desire to break up with Roberto on the same day. She no longer wanted to wait until his birthday or after. I'll come and tell him about it right away, Mariana thought. Whether he likes it or not, I don't care anymore. This can't go on any longer. Mariana opened the door to the apartment. Roberto wasn't home yet. She wearily sat down on the bed, contemplating how many of her belongings she needed to take with her. There was no question of taking any furniture, although she had bought the entire kitchen set with her own money. Let it stay for his new wife, she smiled. I wish he just left me alone. After a couple of hours, Roberto arrived. His wife called him into the kitchen, and he looked at her in bewilderment. Roberto, I think you understand that it no longer makes sense to be a family, Mariana calmly said. So it's better for us to divorce by mutual agreement. Are you serious about this? The husband stalled for time, trying to figure out what was best for him to do now. Roberto certainly planned to divorce his wife, but he intended to do it in a way that made it seem like his initiative. He was very afraid that Mariana might tarnish his reputation, and his pride wouldn't allow that. I think such things can't be solved so easily, he objected. They can, his wife said coldly. Especially when the husband has had mistresses throughout the entire married life. I have something to present to the court. Mariana, these were just romantic encounters, Roberto protested. Did they prevent us from living together? I don't care what you call your mistresses, his wife replied angrily. But I'm not going to tolerate it anymore. Tomorrow, I will file a statement with the court. 
I don't claim any of your property. You don't need to worry about that. Does she want to divorce you just before your birthday? His mother yelled into the phone. How dare she humiliate us like this? What an ungrateful creature. Roberto, there can be no talk of divorce until after your birthday. Please ask her to wait, and on your birthday, I'll arrange something so embarrassing that she won't even want to stay in town. Let me handle this. Roberto understood that his mother had planned a grand celebration to promote both him and herself, and now everything could collapse. The man approached his wife again. Mariana, I ask you to wait with the divorce until after my birthday, her husband dryly stated. You know how shameful it will be for us. No, his wife replied shortly. Won't you get what you deserve? Both you and your mother have lived on someone else's account all your life. I won't wait. I'll file the documents tomorrow. Roberto was in complete despair. First, he had problems because his uncle opened a new mill. Now he realized that his wife was leaving. The man called his mother again. All right, I'll talk to her myself, his mother finally decided. I'll convince her, you can be sure. A few minutes later, Mariana's phone rang. She saw her mother-in-law's number. At first, Mariana didn't want to answer, but she felt so much anger towards her that she wanted to say something to her, at least. Mariana, she said, you and Roberto have the right to decide what to do, but I ask you to wait with the divorce until the anniversary. I've never asked you for anything. Fulfill my first and last request. And it was true. Sarah was not the type of person who could ask, especially of Mariana. She was surprised and agreed to her mother-in-law's request. Thank you, Sarah responded. She hung up and savored her victory for a long while. I'll show you who is the main character at the anniversary. Just you wait and see what it means to cross my path. The next day, Mariana went to work without any enthusiasm. She already wanted to end it all, and now she had to wait for almost three more weeks. Mariana, don't blame yourself for this, her friend said when she called her during lunch. You'll fulfill her request, and all the rest is up to them. Lorenza, I don't want to see him anymore, Mariana responded tearfully. I can't believe I lived with him. Every day, he's all about lipstick, and I can smell those cheap colognes. Well, it doesn't matter to you now, Lorenza countered. What do you care now about whom he has romantic dates with? She laughed. You're just angry with yourself and feel guilty about everything. You think you could have avoided all this, but in reality, you couldn't. If you hadn't gone through all this, you wouldn't have seen all this now. So it was a lesson you had to learn. Oh, Lorenza, I wish I could look at life like you do, Mariana sighed. I feel such pain inside that I can barely breathe. It's nothing, all of this will pass, and much sooner than you think, Lorenza encouraged the woman. After the conversation with Lorenza, her friend felt lighter. In general, Lorenza often played the role of both a psychologist and a psychotherapist for her. The workday ended very quickly that day, simply because Mariana didn't want to go home. She delayed her departure to the very last minute, but it was already half past five and there was nothing left to do at work. I'll go to the park, Mariana decided. It's still bright out. Maybe a walk will calm me down a bit. I don't want to go home. On the one hand, Mariana's concerns didn't turn out to be true. Roberto spent all his nights with his lover. His wife didn't see him at home at all. Sometimes he called her if he had any questions. Finally, Mariana began to fall asleep at night without fear of hearing her husband come back home. Roberto was going through a period of trouble, and he was trying to wriggle out of it all. He finally found someone who could set the fire for him. His mill didn't work for almost a week. No one came to have their grains crushed. It also bothered Roberto that Mariana was the first to decide to leave him. It didn't leave him at peace, and even though he was with Otelia now, he constantly felt vulnerable. Mariana had never left him. It used to be about mistresses, and now it was his wife who took the initiative. Before, when they talked about divorce, Roberto understood that it was all nonsense. He manipulated Mariana very easily, 
but now it was serious. She wants to leave me, he thought. Who does she think she is? Some Mariana from a godforsaken village. She should be grateful to me that I married her, an idiot. I'll strip everything from her. But then Roberto remembered that Mariana wasn't claiming anything from his property, and it hurt him even more. Darling, what's wrong with you? Otelia embraced him. You've been so angry lately. Haven't you solved the issue with the new mill? What? Roberto snapped back to reality. No, everything is fine there. I'm just trying to deal with my wife. Oh, did she refuse to divorce? Otelia asked with curiosity. Of course not. I'm a sweet morsel to lose, Roberto arrogantly laughed. She's practically begging me not to leave her. She's at my feet, pleading for me to stay. But what about you? Otelia looked concerned. Aren't you going to divorce her? I don't need her anymore, Roberto replied, looking at Otelia. I'm tired of that village woman. You can't imagine how. I even blocked her number. She constantly calls, sobbing and begging me to stay. She comes to my work, crawling on her knees in front of me. Roberto, we need to do something about this, Otelia said sternly. Otherwise, she won't leave us alone. She might even start camping outside our door. Don't worry, I'll settle everything soon, Roberto assured her. Everyone should know their place. You're my queen, and what is she? Just a peasant. She lived her whole life among pigs. No beauty, no manners. Roberto, I can't understand one thing. Why did you marry her? Otelia asked in amazement. Do you think I wanted to? Roberto laughed. She drugged me and seduced me. Then, for two months, she chased after me, blackmailing me into believing that she was pregnant with my child. Her father filed a police report, accusing me of rape. Do you know how much trouble they caused me? Do you wonder why we don't have children? Because I never slept with her, she means nothing to me. All right. Let's say you married her, Otelia pondered. But why did she have to endure it for ten years? It was clear within a couple of months that she wasn't pregnant. You could have divorced her right away. Otelia, this Mariana turned my life into a real hell, Roberto lamented. Do you know how many times she slashed her wrists, blackmailing me? If I could have, I would have divorced her a long time ago. Well, now everything will be fine, Otelia assured him. Trust me, with me, you'll be the happiest man. Soon, you'll divorce her, and we'll start a new life. Otelia, I don't need anyone but you, Roberto hugged her. You're everything to me, and let Mariana go to hell. I don't even want to think about her. No one can separate us. Otelia was very pleased with herself. She felt like she had Roberto wrapped around her finger. She didn't even think it would be so easy. Otelia dreamed that soon she would move from her rented apartment to Roberto's place, convince him to transfer his property to her, and then her game would be over. Roberto wasn't as wealthy as she would have liked, so she didn't plan to spend her whole life with him. Mariana awaited her husband's anniversary like a sentence. She had a persistent feeling that something would happen to him that day. She nervously anticipated her husband's birthday. Everything at work was as usual. One day followed another. It was Thursday when Mariana was returning home from work. She walked slowly, paying no attention to the autumn rain starting outside. Mariana stopped near her house. Oh God, it's like a prison for me now, she thought, looking at her entrance. The only consolation is that Roberto doesn't come home in the evening. But that no longer saves me. How I wish I could call a taxi, pack my things, and go wherever my eyes lead me. Mariana entered the entrance and reluctantly climbed to the third floor. She opened the door to her apartment and hesitated on the threshold. Mariana was about to enter when suddenly fast, heavy footsteps were heard downstairs and an unfamiliar man appeared before her. Does Roberto live here? He asked, dissatisfied, I need him urgently. Hello, the apartment owner managed to say in surprise. 
I might disappoint you, but he's unlikely to be home right now. And who are you? The stranger looked at her. Are you his wife or? Neither one nor the other, Mariana replied indifferently. We're in the process of getting a divorce, so I can't tell you where he might be. Probably with his lover. Sorry, the man came to his senses. May I talk to you? It's a very serious matter. With me? Mariana was surprised. If you want to ask me about Roberto, I can't help you. I really don't know where he might be, she answered wearily. And yet, let me ask you a couple of questions, insisted the stranger. Unfortunately, I'm Eugenio, Roberto's uncle. Our family ties don't seem to bother him at all. Are you Eugenio? She asked in shock. Well, come in, but I really don't know how I can help you. To be honest, I have so much conflicting information about you that I don't even know what to believe, she sighed. Sira never spoke well of you as long as I've known her. As far as I understand, she always hated you, but I don't quite understand why. Because she has no reason for that, Eugenio sighed and sat on the chair Mariana offered. She has always been arrogant. I don't know how she managed to get married with such a character. Anyway, Alejandro was under her thumb for almost eight years, and then one fine day they found him dead near the house. Until now, no one knows what happened to him. According to the doctor's report, his heart stopped. Sarah turned his life into hell. She didn't let him breathe. He would come to work and find some relief from her there for a while. She never worked anywhere herself. In fact, you could say she married herself off to him. The guy categorically didn't want to marry her. Wow, Mariana looked at Eugenio in amazement. You wouldn't say that about her. She tells everyone about her difficult life and how she raised and educated two children on her own. When Alejandro died, I felt sorry for Roberto and Wanda, the guest side. I had just turned 18, so I immediately took Alejandro's job, and my sister took almost all the money earned. Later, I found out that she had a sponsor on the side during those years. After her husband's death, Sarah quickly captivated the director of the forestry enterprise, who also brought her money. That's why she hated me, because I knew about all her lovers, and she couldn't do anything about it. My sister used the tactic of the best defense is offense and tried her best to discredit me. Unfortunately, she turned her children against me too, although both of them are just like her. They grew up just as selfish and inhuman. So, I haven't lost anything from not having relatives. And your mother? Mariana cautiously asked Eugenio. Was she still alive then? No, he replied, annoyed. Mom died shortly before Sarah's husband did. Mom was a very good person. It's unclear to whom she gave birth to such a monster. Mariana immersed herself in her thoughts while the guest drank his coffee. She realized that everything she thought about her husband and his mother didn't seem to be true. All of it was actually like that, and expecting to be happy with him was just funny. Mariana, I wanted to talk to you, not discuss my sister, Eugenio finally spoke. Roberto is such an idiot that, in his blindness, he even resorted to committing a crime. Did he kill someone? Mariana exclaimed in shock. I always thought he was a coward. Precisely because he's a real coward, he wanted to commit arson, the guest replied. You see? I was lucky, and I opened a mill on the other side of the city. I know how people live here, so I set very democratic prices for my work. And even the increased prices I was planning to set are almost half of Roberto's. He found out that another mill had opened in the city and came to threaten me, trying to intimidate me with his words. That's all they can do. It runs in the family. And tonight, my guard caught one of them. He was planning to set fire to my mill. Naturally, apart from Roberto and his mother, nobody needs it. They lack imagination, so they decided to, let's say, get rid of a competitor on their path. I haven't filed a police report yet. I wanted to talk to him first. And if he doesn't come to his senses, I won't pity them anymore. I honestly don't know where he is, replied the hostess after hearing the guest's story. 
Roberto hasn't spent a night at home for a week. After I told him I would file for divorce, his mother asked me to wait until his anniversary. She's planning a grand banquet. Oh, she certainly can. She's just out to self-promote, laughed Eugenio. I would advise you to be cautious with them. They're rotten and heartless people. They don't care about anyone besides themselves. I unfortunately realized that too late, Mariana sighed. I wasted nearly a decade. Well, nothing happens in vain, the man reassured her. You know, I was very angry with myself for working for Syrup for three years. But then I saw that I was right in that situation and that, regardless of what she says about me, God knows that I'm in the right. And she'll get what's coming to her. Well, sorry for bringing my problems to you. You need to sort things out with yourself. I'll keep watch over Roberto at his mill. I work as a laborer myself at my place. I can't hire many people, so I have to do the work myself. The man thanked Mariana for the coffee and left the apartment. She had been watching him go for a long time. So, for years, there were legends about what a scoundrel and cheat Eugenio was, and in reality, it turned out to be just the opposite, she thought. So, the rumors about Sarah's administrator lover are true too. They have a family thing for having lovers. Apparently, their mother introduced this rule to their family. Mariana smiled at her thoughts. Mariana closed the door and tiredly sat on the couch. She felt as though she had been deceived for many years, and to date she finally learned the truth. Everything fell into place. The issue of divorce was already settled for her. Nothing could turn Mariana back. She would never have a normal life with Roberto. To her surprise, her husband returned home that evening. He was looking for some documents. Mariana didn't particularly want to interfere in his affairs, but something prompted her to start talking to him. Your uncle came over today. She looked at her husband. He wanted to talk to you. What did he need? Roberto asked in a contemptuous tone. That scoundrel came over to my place. He caught a person last night who wanted to set his mill on fire, his wife coldly said. So, before filing a police report, he wanted to talk to you. Roberto turned pale. They told him everything was set under his mill last night, and tonight, all that's left is to throw a match in the right place. How did he catch him? The man asked, shocked. Has he already been to the police? He whispered in horror. Well, it seems like no, his wife answered indifferently, that's why he was looking for you, he wanted to talk to you. Roberto was staring at his wife intently. His eyes darted from side to side, and sweat appeared on his face. He didn't say anything else to Mariana and rushed out of the apartment. What an idiot. The man cursed as he got into his car. I'll give him a good seeing. He wants to file a police report against me. Roberto drove towards his uncle's house. It was almost 10 when he knocked on the door. Why the hell did you come to my wife today? He shouted. Did you want to rape her or have you been having an affair with her for a long time? Eugenio expected anything from his psychotic nephew, but not this. He looked at him in shock. I'm asking you, what's going on between you and my Mariana? Why did you come to her today? The neighbors told me everything. Roberto's eyes burned with rage. Did you sleep with my wife? Tell me. Eugenio understood that a normal conversation with his nephew was impossible. I'll file a police report against you tomorrow, he replied shortly. I've had enough of your madness. It will include an attempted arson of my mill and slander against me and your wife. Eugenio entered the yard and closed the gate. Roberto pounded on it for a long time, shouted something, then jumped into his car and drove home. Mariana. He shouted from the doorway. Come here quickly, he ordered his wife. She was already asleep when she heard his inhuman scream. She came out to him in shock. Roberto's hair was disheveled and spasms ran through his entire body. Mariana, I found out everything, he finally said. So... This is the true reason you want to divorce. You cheated on me with my uncle. Roberto, 
Have you gone completely mad? Mariana looked at him in amazement. Do you even understand what you're saying? I went to him, and he confessed everything to me. Her husband shouted like a madman. How could you? And he unexpectedly hit her in the face. You're such trash. Get out. Mariana shouted at the top of her lungs. I'll call the police and an ambulance to take you to the psychiatric hospital. That's where you belong. Roberto seemed to come to his senses a bit. After my birthday, never come to my house again, he said angrily. How much I hate you. You slept with him for so many years. As soon as I threatened him, he immediately confessed everything to me. What a scoundrel you are. Roberto slammed the door and quickly ran downstairs. Mariana was standing there, feeling like she'd been doused in filth. She couldn't understand what had just happened. Finally, she covered her face with her hands and burst into tears. Could Eugenio really say something like that to him? Her mind exploded. He seemed like a reasonable person to me. Dear God, what have I gotten myself into? Now this idiot will tell everyone that I cheated on him with his uncle. Mariana spent the rest of the night in the kitchen, sipping Valerian. She couldn't come to her senses. I'll go to the mill to talk to Eugenio today, she decided. Lord, I don't understand what's happening at all. Who is the fool, and who is sane? The next day, Mariana barely made it to work. She was pale and could barely stand on her feet. Mariana, go home, her boss let her go. I can see that you're not feeling well. At first, Mariana wanted to go home, but then she turned around and headed to the bus stop to get to the other end of the city. It was around 10 when she finally found the new mill. Mariana felt a strong fatigue, so when she entered the mill's premises, she almost fell. Are you okay? A guy with a broom picked her up. Let me get you a chair. Thank you, I'm fine, the guest said quietly. Could you please call for Eugenio, your boss? Sure, wait, the guy replied, and, leaving the broom behind, he ran into some tall building. After about 20 minutes, Eugenio appeared on the street, wearing work clothes and covered in dust from the crusher. Mariana? The man was surprised. What happened? You look like you've seen a ghost. Eugenio, she began, and, unable to hold back, burst into tears. Did you tell Roberto yesterday that we had an affair? He came to me at night, accused me of infidelity, and said that you confessed everything to him. What nonsense is this? The man got angry. When will all this crap leave my life? He couldn't stand it and cursed. Oh God, they're all insane. They all need to be at the psychiatric hospital. Yesterday, late in the evening, he came to me. Probably after you told him that I was looking for him. This idiot was yelling like crazy. First, I wanted to rape you. Then, we've been lovers for many years. I didn't say anything to him about that. I only said one thing, that today I will go and file a police report against him for attempted arson and slander. That's it. Oh my God. But he really is insane, Mariana said, barely audible. He blamed me. Now, it turns out, he's divorcing me because he thinks I cheated on him with you. Not because he had affairs on the side for 10 years, but because he made up a story about what a vile creature I turned out to be. I told you that this family is a bunch of moral freaks, the man sighed. You should stay away from them altogether. All right, forget about them, Mariana. I'm sorry, but I'm starting to worry about you. I understand that you are perfectly normal and sane while he can break someone's psyche in a split second. Wait for me here. I'll be back soon, the mill owner asked. Mariana couldn't do anything. Tears kept flowing down her cheeks. It hurt so much. At that time, she couldn't understand how someone could lie so easily and shatter another person's destiny. Eugenio arrived, panting. Let's go. You need to snap out of it. Otherwise, you'll sink into such a depression that it will take you months to get out. Besides, I'm aware of the situation, and it will be easier for you to discuss everything with me. 
Mariana obediently followed Eugenio. She understood that it would be very difficult for her to understand and accept all of this on her own. All right, let's order some hot coffee and something sweet to lift your spirits. And then, if we get hungry, we'll ask for something more substantial. The man seated her at a table in the cafe. Mariana looked around indifferently. She was in such a deep depression that she constantly felt like crying. They brought hot coffee, and the woman seemed to start coming to her senses. Mariana, in reality, there's nothing new in all of this, Eugenio looked at her. These are psychological traps for the mind that have existed for thousands of years. Firstly, always attack first. What do Roberto and his mother gain from this? Well, we stay in shock for a while, so it's easy to manipulate us, and we become somewhat helpless. And now the most crucial question, where does this internal pain come from? I mean, why does their lie hurt us so much? We always rely on the opinions of others rather than our own. It's not that Roberto is a complete idiot, it's that others might believe his slander. But I never did that, Mariana replied through tears. I never gave him any reason to doubt me in all 10 years. Exactly. You've built a certain image of yourself, Eugenio reassured her. In your opinion, Mariana, you are a worthy and good wife. But does Roberto's lie change anything? No. For you, the truth remains the truth, but now other people come into play. That's the problem. You need to prove to others that it's a lie. And the most important question, should we prove something to someone if we know the truth? No. Those willing to accept this truth will do so on their own, and those unwilling will never accept it, no matter what you do. Do you understand? It seems so, Mariana's eyes brightened. After all, no matter what Roberto says, I didn't do that, but for some reason, I find myself behaving as if it were true. I feel ashamed of something I never did. I'm afraid that others will think poorly of me. That's the biggest problem with lies, Eugenio said, looking at her. You're not guilty, but somehow you feel guilty for something you never did. You know how much I went through when my beloved girl died on the construction site? It's one thing when rumors spread among those you work with, and it's another when the closest people make them up. And here, it seems, there's nothing you can do because everyone knows that you interact with them, you trust them, and you tell them things you don't tell strangers. And an illusion is created that relatives not only know more but know all the most mysterious details of your life, so you have to trust their information. When Eleonora was shattered, Sarah would come up with the most unbelievable stories. I struggled with this for many years. Initially, in her version, I wanted to assault Eleonora before the wedding, but she didn't want to be intimate with me. Then, in her other version, Eleonora cheated on me, and I personally disposed of her. I just did everything so carefully that no one could prove it. At that time, I was in so much pain from losing my beloved, but my sister took advantage of this and tried to psychologically break me. If I had drunk myself to death or killed myself at that time, she would have felt the happiest because it would have proved her superiority and her power. The same goes for Roberto. He doesn't care about you. The most important thing for him is to always be on top. He can never be wrong. My friend Lorenza told me the same, Mariana replied. I understand what you're saying. I just can't express it with the right words. You know, I fought with them almost all my life and tried to prove something to them, the man continued. But all this time, I made the same mistake. I thought that these people would eventually understand me. Mariana, now I can say with complete confidence that this will never happen. It's just impossible. They are incapable. They live in their own imaginary world, and they will never allow anyone or anything to pull them out of it. They will fight everyone to the end just to not admit their wrongdoings. So what should we do then? Mariana pondered. We still need to find a way to live. There's only one way out, Eugenio replied, to leave them and live our own lives. You know, in the beginning, it was so difficult for me not to react to all this nonsense. But I made great efforts. At that time, Sarah's tongue turned into the sharpest knife. 
It was cutting me mercilessly, but a few years later, she realized that she no longer had that effect on me. Then, my sister started making even more unbelievable things up. And since it already seemed like madness from afar, many people started turning away from her. Because of her delusions, she even lost a very promising lover. How angry she was with me then. Of course, she soon found an administrator, but still. When I completely stopped reacting to them, my business started to prosper. I had a good income. I was able to buy a mill, which was a very promising endeavor for our city. I wasn't planning to compete with Roberto. I didn't even know anything about his prices. A few days after my business opened, people started coming to me and telling me how Roberto raised prices and mistreated his workers. It all happened on its own. Mariana was listening attentively to her conversation, and she felt clearer in her soul. It seemed to her that she and Eugenio were even somewhat similar. Only the man had gone through much, while she hadn't. She still had to face all the cunning of Roberto and his mother. After meeting Eugenio, Mariana started gathering her things. She rented a small apartment near her work and moved there. But Mariana didn't have enough experience yet to see through all of her husband's and Sarah's games. Mariana, where are you? Her husband asked anxiously when he didn't find his wife or her belongings at home in the evening. Roberto, tomorrow I'm filing for divorce, she calmly replied. After what you did yesterday, I don't need your anniversary or your mother. Mariana, you promised, remember? Her husband began pressuring her. How can anyone deal with you if you don't keep your word? Roberto, that's enough, Mariana said dryly. I won't play your games anymore. Do as you wish. The man was greatly perplexed. Firstly, he felt on top of the world for coming up with such a cunning plan involving Mariana. The reason for the divorce now shifted to his wife, and he was left completely unblemished in the whole situation. But all of this needed to be made public, to be revealed on his birthday, and now Mariana had stepped out of his control. Roberto picked up the phone and called his mother. Sarah was overjoyed by his plan. You couldn't have come up with anything better, son, she rejoiced. Mariana cheated on you with Eugenio. It's such a wonderful plan. Everyone will find out about it at the anniversary. Mom, but there's one problem, the son replied with annoyance in his voice. Mariana left me. She's planning to file for divorce tomorrow. What should we do now? His mother remained silent for a while. She realized she couldn't avoid talking to Mariana. A few minutes later, she was already calling her daughter-in-law. Mariana did not answer her call. Then Sira began calling her every five minutes. Finally, Mariana couldn't take it anymore. Mariana. Roberto's mother wailed at the top of her voice. How could this happen? I thought you and my boy would soon reconcile. I really want you to live with him. Who needs him besides you? And anyway, Roberto has been in tears all day because you left him. I won't go back to him, Mariana replied coldly. So don't waste your time. Mariana, I'm begging you, please don't abandon us at the anniversary, Sarah said, stuttering through tears. Please, do whatever you want after Roberto's birthday, but don't abandon us at the anniversary. After he accused me of cheating on him with his own uncle, I won't do it, Mariana refused. So figure it out for yourselves. Mariana, but you're an adult. The mother-in-law hissed like a snake. But if you aren't at the anniversary, everyone will think it's true. And if you show up, no matter what Roberto says in anger, you'll prove to everyone that you have always been loyal to him and that you're a good wife. Mariana herself didn't understand why, but she agreed again. Sarah's arguments were so convincing that she simply gave in. Well, all right, finally, said Mariana. I'll come to the anniversary as Roberto's wife, and this will be my last role, but I won't return to the apartment to my husband. Mariana, my dear, thank you. Roberto's mother showered her with gratitude. I promise that my son won't harass you anymore. 
The main thing is that you will be present at his anniversary as his wife, and afterwards you can proceed with the divorce. After her conversation with her mother-in-law, Mariana once again felt in danger. She called Eugenio, who had left her his phone number today. Mariana, I wouldn't do that if I were you, he responded anxiously. But, on the other hand, maybe for people like them, this will be the last chance. In any case, if you feel you're in trouble, or even if you have no one to talk to, call me. I'll help however I can. Before Roberto's birthday, there were only a few days left. By this time, Mariana had already calmed down a bit. She lived in a rented apartment, and her confidence was gradually returning. One day before the birthday, Roberto called her. Hello, Mariana, he greeted his wife with a tender voice. So, are you ready? I can't do without you, he laughed loudly. I'll pick you up tomorrow. Just tell me your address. Roberto, we'll meet near the restaurant, his wife replied indifferently. No need to pick me up. I'll get there myself. All right, agreed the man. What time should I expect you? Let's say half past six. Roberto was barely holding himself together. Lately, so much had been piling up on him that he could barely cope with everything. His mill, so to speak, was almost at a standstill. After Eugenio found out about the arson, Roberto didn't take any more risks. Fortunately, his uncle never filed a complaint against him. Money was running out very quickly, and he struggled to make ends meet to provide Otilio with something. However, she seemed to be cooling off towards him. For Roberto, this wasn't a significant problem. He was not foolish when it came to such women. He knew how to play with them, but the game had to be on his terms. Naturally, he promised his girlfriend the world, as he did with all her predecessors, but he always gave his mistresses only a small amount of money for pocket expenses. Otelia, we're currently reorganizing our mill, he told the girl. So, you'll have to wait for about six months, and then we'll have very good earnings. We'll buy you a car right away. Roberto, can't we do it sooner? Otelia doubted. Of course, I love you and will wait, but... Darling, everything will be fine, the man replied, kissing her. There can be no buts. Roberto used several tricks to end relationships. One of the most common ones was accusing his lover of infidelity, usually presenting some incontrovertible evidence. He applied this method to his wife as well. After this, the mistress would try to prove her innocence for some time, but Roberto always remained inflexible. The only thing I can't forgive, he always told his new lover, is betrayal. He never felt guilty about constantly violating his own rules. The main thing was that others obeyed his established law, so this trick worked very well. For more conceited and arrogant women, he used a story about illness or a situation where he was losing everything. Such women did not intend to sacrifice their lives for a sick or destitute lover, and they immediately stopped all contact with him. My love, I don't even know how to tell you, but I've been diagnosed with a very serious illness, he said with tears in his voice. And if I don't get very expensive medications, I'll simply die in the next few months. I'm begging you, for the sake of our love, to help me. These were the last words Roberto said, and the girl disappeared from his life forever. He had another game, but he played it very rarely. Such girls didn't often cross his path. Roberto simply began to pursue the girl. He constantly blackmailed her, claiming he would end his life and that he couldn't live without her. This usually worked well with those who did not want a family or serious relationships. These girls loved physical pleasures and money, but they didn't want to take responsibility. Roberto understood that Otilio would eventually leave his life, but the man had one very strict rule that he never broke. He was the only one to leave all of his mistresses. None of them could leave him first. It was some kind of quirk or inferiority complex, but Roberto never allowed a girl to leave him first. Even if the mistress initiated the breakup, he would bring her back by any means, and then he would end things himself. The man often asked himself why he married Mariana, but he didn't know the answer. His wife was very devoted, and that was exactly what the man had always dreamed of. 
From the outside, it seemed completely schizophrenic, but Roberto actually dreamed of a woman who would always be faithful to him while he would betray her. Roberto's birthday arrived. Mariana was in a bad mood from the early morning. It was Saturday, and she wandered aimlessly back and forth. I don't even want to look at my wardrobe, Mariana closed the chiffonier. And in general, I'd like to go there in my bathrobe, congratulate Roberto, and leave, but it won't work. I'll have to stay there for at least three hours. Mariana tried to watch TV, but all her attention was consumed by the upcoming celebration. She picked up the phone. Oh, Lorenza, I have a bad feeling, Mariana complained to her friend. If you only knew how much I didn't want to go there. Mariana, this is your last battle. It's always the toughest, her friend encouraged her. After this, you'll never see them again, and you'll start a new life. Do you think so? She said with doubt in her voice. They've messed with my head so much that I don't believe in anything anymore, Mariana sighed. I never thought they would want this day to vanish as if it never happened. Most importantly, get ready for it. Whatever happens, you're ready to learn your lesson, Lorenza reassured Mariana. No matter what they do, you'll get through it, and a new chapter will finally begin in your life. God never gives a trial if a person isn't ready for it, which means that whatever happens, you are prepared for it. Come on, break a leg, as they say. Be sure to call me after this witch's Sabbath. The conversation with Lorenza made the woman a little more confident. She sat on the couch and pondered over her words. So, I'm really ready to go through all of this, she said loudly. Whatever happens, I'll definitely handle it. Mariana put on her casual blue dress, let her hair down, and applied light makeup. She looked beautiful. Mariana didn't hide her hair under a hat. She simply threw the coat hood over her head. She didn't want to drag herself across the city on public transport and called a taxi. Well, God be with me, she said to herself, and she dictated the destination address to the taxi driver. Her husband was already waiting for her near the restaurant. It was evident that he was very nervous. Roberto immediately ran up to his wife and helped her out of the taxi. Mariana, we need to stick together today, he said instead of a greeting. Whatever happens, Roberto, happy birthday, she said with a smile. Let my presence here be your gift. And that's the best gift for me, her husband quickly replied. So, may I take your hand? We should enter the restaurant together. Mariana felt his hand touch hers. A sudden chill ran through her from head to toe. Her entire body began to tremble. Mariana, are you afraid? Roberto looked at her in surprise. Come on, everything will be fine, he said, patting her hand. Mariana didn't say anything. She didn't fully understand what was happening to her at that moment. She desperately wanted to break free and run away. When the couple entered, Sarah immediately approached them. She played the role of a loving and caring mother-in-law. Mariana, Roberto, let's go inside. We're going to start soon, she greeted the couple. Mariana looked around. The celebration was indeed planned on a grand scale. Half of the tables were already occupied. Judging by how people were dressed, most of them were quite prosperous or belonged to the middle class by the standards of a provincial town. She tried to estimate in her mind, and it seemed to be around 50 people. And where did she get so much money? Her daughter-in-law thought to herself, as long as I've known her, she's always complained that she doesn't even have enough money for a piece of bread. Sarah was supposed to turn 60 this year, but despite her age, she remained a prominent woman. Eugenio was nothing like her. Not that he was unattractive, but his sister was a petite, dark-haired beauty. On the other hand, her brother was a tall, slender blonde with dark blue eyes. Sarah moved back and forth, showcasing her slim figure and several gold rings on her fingers, which she deliberately adjusted from time to time. Probably gifts from her former lovers, Mariana's thought quickly flashed through her mind. Finally, by 7 o'clock, everyone had gathered, and the anniversary celebration began. A special team led the festive program, frequently handing microphones to people, allowing them to speak. 
Dear Roberto, one of the guests stood up. I don't even know how to express my gratitude for the day I met you. The hired by Sarah actor sang praises to the birthday celebrant for half an hour. Finally, he recited by heart the entire text prepared by Roberto's mother and, wiping the sweat off his face, wearily sat down. Everything was going well. The crowd was having fun, Mariana had sipped some wine, and the inner tension that had been tormenting her all this time had subsided a bit. She ate, about an hour and a half had passed, and Mariana was already planning to get up and leave when, unexpectedly, Sarah tipped the microphone in her hands. Dear friends, she began, I wholeheartedly thank all of you. My son is truly wonderful, and the words we heard today speak of all the trials and hardships I have gone through in life not being in vain. I put so much effort into raising my son, and everyone who knows him can call him a remarkable person. And as a mother, I am incredibly happy. But there's one circumstance that tarnishes not only my son, but also me. Unfortunately, Mariana, my daughter-in-law, couldn't appreciate all that my son did for her. She played with my boy for almost 10 years. Excuse me, but I can't bear it anymore. Perhaps, by publicly sharing this story, she will finally have enough conscience to let go of our family. Mariana turned pale. She wanted to get up and leave, but her legs stopped responding. Not only can Mariana not have children, Sira continued, she also brought shame on her family in her youth and got pregnant by a married man. Her father made her have an abortion at the age of 15, and my beloved son hoped for a miracle all these years. If only you knew how much Roberto loves children, but this callous Mariana has betrayed my son all these years. And if only you knew with whom, with my own brother, Eugenio. Since Mariana can't have children, she did this absolutely fearlessly, but my brother finally realized her wicked plan and left Mariana, so now she's trying to do everything possible to prevent Roberto from leaving her. My daughter-in-law is pretending to be an exemplary wife, and now I lay all this before your judgment. As a mother, I can't bear to see my son suffer anymore. I ask you to condemn this woman. Why do you need such a daughter-in-law? Hired people chimed in chase her out. Mariana felt a surge of anger rising in her throat, and she wanted to scream at the top of her lungs that all this was untrue, but, to her surprise, she calmly got up from the table and, without looking back, left the restaurant. Eugenio, are they insane? Mariana sobbed into the phone. How can they lie so shamelessly? I expected this to happen, the man sighed. Mariana, wait for me. I'm coming for you now. Damn bastards. Eugenio cursed himself. Do they think they can do whatever they want? But it's okay. God will reach them too. After 40 minutes, Eugenio found Mariana in the park by the old fountain. Her eyes were swollen from crying. Well, we've been through it now, he said, embracing her. Now, there's nothing more they can take from you. Eugenio had come to Mariana in his old work clothes, seated her in the car, and they headed to the mill. Mariana, take a stroll here for a while. We need to finish an urgent order today, and then we'll go somewhere together. You shouldn't be alone right now. Eugenio and his team finished their work by 10. The client had paid them handsomely that day, despite the orchestrated drama by his sister and nephew. Despite this apparent success, Eugenio realized that Roberto, with his mill, wouldn't last long. I wonder what they'll do next, he mused, hauling sex. Do they really have the audacity to ask me for money? The birthday ended just as Sira had planned. Everyone sympathized with her and Roberto, and the last words were about her daughter-in-law. Thank you for such a fantastic evening, the head of the enterprise said, shaking Sira's hand. Sira, you need to stay strong. I think now that everyone knows about your daughter-in-law, she won't be able to blackmail your son anymore, and he can finally divorce her. He bent down to her ear and whispered gently, I'll come to see you in a few days. We'll discuss everything then, winking at her. Despite the dizzying success, the euphoria of Sira and Roberto didn't last long. Two weeks later, Roberto had to close his mill. He faced serious problems with his mistress. You know, Roberto, 
You've been lying to me all this time, Otelia declared. Today, I was at your workplace. You closed the mill, so you have no money now and won't have any in the near future. Otelia, but we moved, Roberto tried to salvage the situation. We are now in a different part of the city. Don't lie. She angrily shouted. I was told that you went bankrupt. Pack your things and get out of my apartment. She yelled at him. Otelia, my love, Roberto attempted, didn't you tell me you couldn't live without me? Only if you have enough money, Otelia frankly replied. And I don't need a pauper like you. From this day on, I'm dead to you. Roberto returned home in a rage. He angrily scattered his things around the apartment. Mom, it's all over with the mill, he called Sarah. Because of that damn bitch, I've lost everything. How am I supposed to live now? Roberto, son, I'll think of something, his mother coldly replied. So don't panic. I have a few sponsors in mind, so we'll come up with something soon. But a month passed, then two, and then six, and things didn't improve for Sarah and her son. Mom, I'm in debt to everyone, complained Roberto. I might have to sell the apartment soon. When are you going to do something? And what have you done yourself? His mother snapped at him. You've been hanging on my neck all your life. Look, I'm not doing well either. That damn factory director turned out to be so greedy. He didn't give me a penny. I'm trying my best to squeeze some money out of the gas station owner, but he only gives me pocket money. Maybe you should ask Eugenio for money? Her son suggested. You'll cry a bit, he'll forgive you, and he'll give you some money. I heard his mill is doing so well that he's raking in money. That's out of the question. I won't ask that scoundrel for anything. It's beneath my dignity, the mother scoffed. But three months later, when they were completely adrift without any means of livelihood, Sarah put on a pitiful face and went to her younger brother's house. Well, be careful, she muttered to herself. Because of you, my son went bankrupt, so you'll pay back every penny to him. The taxi stopped near a large house. Sarah pressed the doorbell. Who's there? A familiar voice sounded, and the woman trembled. Coming right now. After about five minutes, Mariana came out onto the street. She was holding her large belly. You? The former mother-in-law stared at her in shock. What are you doing here? I live here, Mariana laughed. And why have you come here? Should I call for my husband? Eugenio, your beloved relatives are here, she joked. Sira was completely defeated, and she knew it. But an inner impulse compelled her to fight to the end. Eugenio, she threw herself into her brother's arms with tears in her eyes, my dear brother. Let's skip the drama, Eugenio removed her hands. What, things must be really bad if you've set aside your pride and come to me. Eugenio, I'm so sick, she continued her theatrical performance. I don't have much time left. Forgive me for everything. I only now realize what I've done. Please have mercy on me so I don't die with such a heavy burden. God will forgive you, her brother replied shortly. Farewell, Sarah. Now and forever, he coldly said. Are you really abandoning me in my distress? Sarah cried. I'm in such hellish pain. I need expensive medications. Yes, Eugenio turned around and looked at his sister one last time. Let your son take care of you, and he closed the gate, walking back into the house. After Sarah humiliated her daughter-in-law at the birthday party, Mariana somehow managed to wait until the end of the workday, and she and Eugenio went to his home. It was already late, and the cafes were closed. Mariana, if you want, you can stay at my place after dinner. If not, I'll take you home and cover the taxi fare, offered the man. Eugenio, thank you for everything. But I need some time alone, replied Mariana. I have to cry until all this pain and tears go away. You've done so much for me already. I understand, sighed the man. Unfortunately, people like them don't know when it's time to stop. They think they can say anything and nothing will happen to them. 
You know, I've observed this phenomenon so many times and realized that they genuinely believe in what they say. They have no other choice. If they don't believe in all this nonsense, it would mean admitting they're lying, and that's a challenge to their perfection. They can't allow that, so they have to believe in their own nonsense, and it doesn't matter how crazy it looks from the outside. You know, this is the first time I've encountered people like them, or at least to this extent, Mariana said, sipping her hot coffee. They seem normal on the outside, and you expect reasonable actions from them. When that doesn't happen, you can't understand what's going on. That's the most challenging part for me. It turns out that not all people are kind and good. There are some who deliberately want to destroy you for no reason. Essentially, what have I done to them? Nothing, Eugenio reassured her. Neither Roberto nor his mother have any grounds to treat me like this. That's what I told you, Eugenio looked at her. There's only one way, leave them alone and don't engage with them in any way. You need to learn to simply ignore them. They mean nothing to you. Let them make up whatever they want. With their sick imagination, they can come up with anything. Just know that they mean nothing to you. After that day, Eugenio started calling Mariana every day. They had common topics for conversation. In reality, Mariana felt that Eugenio had saved her back then. There was some truth to it. He showed her things she didn't want to notice before. After a few months, Eugenio and Mariana became good friends. They would occasionally go to cafes, constantly discussing work matters. It was very easy for Mariana and Eugenio. Two more months passed, and she began to feel that her new acquaintance was not just a friend. Mariana panicked. You know, Eugenio once said to her, I'm 50 years old. After Eleonora was gone, I never looked at another woman. No one piqued my interest. I even thought I would die a bachelor. But you, you changed everything. I need you. Eugenio, Mariana tried to keep herself composed. You are my very best friend. I'll be honest with you. I feel you mean more to me, but I'm afraid. So, we just need to wait. The man looked into her eyes, and that's something both of us know how to do. But they didn't have to wait long. Two weeks later, Mariana said yes to Eugenio, and they immediately tied the knot. Their wedding resembled more of a dinner among friends, organized by the loving couple at their mill. It wasn't even two months before Mariana realized she was pregnant. Eugenio, it's like a miracle, the woman couldn't believe such news. Lord, I've been waiting for this for so many years. Well, it's not the last one, then, her husband kissed her. I'm up for plenty, so let's plan for at least two, but I'd like a third as well. Just let me handle this one first, his wife laughed. You know, I'm scared. Everything will be fine, my love, Eugenio embraced Mariana. Darling, how happy I am. The visit of Eugenio's sister was as if the last thin thread had snapped, and things started looking up for Eugenio and Mariana. The mill owner opened two more new workshops for feed production. His employees were treated well, and their wages were fair. The first child Mariana gave birth to was a boy. Shortly afterward, a girl joined the family. Then the couple took a two-year break before welcoming mischievous twins into the world. Mariana, you've even outdone me, her brother teased. You must have intentionally waited until almost 36 to set records. Toya and I managed to have three somehow, and you and Eugenio are popping them out like little pastries. I won't be surprised if your twins aren't the last, he added. That's just fine, their father replied. Let us have a whole football team. The main thing is that Mariana has finally found her happiness. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.